and do a quick little introduction and discussion about what hydrates are. So a hydrate um, can be used for multiple reasons. A hydrate is something that water is absorbed into. This is an example of a product you could pick up from Menards or Home Depot or Mills Fleet, something like that, where you can actually absorb water from the air and it's called damp rid. And because the crystal absorbs water into it from the air, it takes it out of the air. So instead of a running a dehumidifier, you could run this instead. And depending on the size of it, obviously you take out, out more water if you have many of these, but essentially you have crystals in there. Once they all turn to liquid, you just dump them out and you add more crystals and it's cheap, probably cheaper, just not quite as fast as running a dehumidifier. Dehumidifiers are pretty expensive to run and keep them going. So let's take a look at what a hydrate might look like. Sometimes it's made out of silica gel, these little packets that you'd see like in some beef jerky or maybe even some shoes to try to absorb water. But sometimes they're made out of a ionic compound called a hydrate. So you can fill in the blanks here. Ionic compound that has water molecules as an integral part of their crystal structure. So here's an example of cobalt 2 chloride as an anhydrous substance is actually blue. They don't always change color when they have water or don't have water, but uh, this one does, and the one you'll be doing in your lab also does. But here's anhydrous, which means without water. It looks blue, it's just regular cobalt 2 chloride. When the water is embedded in it, it's called a hydrated form of it, and that has the hexahydrate. Um, in it because there's six waters that gets attached. This number six could change for the hydrate, could be a one, two, three, eight, what depends on the situation. Um, and then whatever that number is, we use the prefix um, from covalent naming. So it could be mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, and as you hear, hexa, depending on the number. Um, could even go up to what we'll be doing, nine with nana or 10 with deca. You'll see, you'll see a nine with that at some point in this class. So just some practice naming. If you want to stop it and try to do these yourself real quick, um, you can. I'm going to go over the answers um, as far as what you would write for each of these. So magnesium is a plus two. Sulfate is a minus two. So it'd be MgSO4. And then a dot is shown between the ionic substance and the water. Hepta meaning seven, and that's H2O. Um, that is Epsom salt. Uh, it's actually right on the outside of the box of Epsom salt is that exact formula with the waters and everything. Here we have calcium chloride. Calcium's a plus two, chloride's a minus one. So CaCl2 dot. Now the dye means there's two waters embedded. So it depends on the hydrate, how many waters get embedded naturally in it. And then these two, I'll just read out loud. This is calcium sulfate dihydrate. And here we have magnesium nitrate hexahydrate. So um, many ionic compounds can absorb water into their structure. Um, not all, but many can. And the ones that can are called hydrates. When they have the waters, they're hydrated. When they do not, they're called anhydrous. So what, is, and you'll be doing some of this naming on the lab write-up, but not in the not on any test for this class. So <clears throat> what you'll be using in the lab is copper two sulfate. It will be blue, as you see here, when there's water in it. So this is with water. Then we're gonna heat it up, and this is without water. Um, it looks whitish, kind of a blue hue, but definitely the bright blue has gone away. Um, so we're going to have a certain amount of mass of this. We're going to use about five grams of that. It doesn't really matter exactly what you get, but around five grams of this. And then you're going to heat off the water with a, in an evaporating dish. And then you're going to have a certain amount of the anhydrous copper sulfate, copper two sulfate left. And let's just say you have four grams left. Well, one gram of it must have been water. Um, one gram out of the five, which would be 20%. So one of the things you're finding in this lab is the percent of water in the hydrate originally. Uh, so that all you'll do there is take the amount of water that was lost during heating, divided by the amount that you started with here. The other thing is to find the empirical formula, and that's this right here. This is an empirical formula. Um, it's copper two sulfate, I'm telling you that ahead of time, and there's water in it. The question mark is, what's this? Is that a one, a two, a three, a four? What number, how many water molecules is there per CuSO4? And to be able to do that, you are gonna to need to change the grams. This is probably the most difficult thing for students is how do I get that empirical formula? 
you're gonna change those grams to moles. So um, the water that's lost, and then the same thing for the copper sulfate by itself, grams per one mole, figure out what each of those are for moles, and then you compare them. If there's three times as many water moles as copper sulfate moles, then this would be a three. If there's six times as many, this would be a six. In this case, since it's a lab, we won't um, multiply by any number. Let's say you get uh, 3.5 here um, and one. Now 3.5 to one ratio for the water. We're not gonna multiply by two to get seven and two. We would just round it to the nearest whole number. So if it happened to be 3.5 something, we'd round it up to a four um, in that case. Because it is a lab, we're not gonna have perfect data, but we do get pretty good data in this lab. So that's what we're gonna end up doing in the lab. We're going to heat up some of this blue stuff and it's gonna turn white because the water is going to go away. So from that, um, all you need to do at this point is get some lab data, but you could fill out some other things, um, the questions for the lab um, at this point.